be a quarterback. With the sixth pick, the New York Giants select. Daniel Jones, quarterback, Duke. I would have went with Dwayne Haskins, but we'll see here. Okay. Hopefully he turns out to be a fine quarterback for them. Giants head coach Pat Shermer has been adamant that Eli Manning is his starter despite the preseason performance of rookie quarterback Daniel Jones. The sixth overall pick completed 85% of his pass attempts for over 400 yards with two touchdowns and no interceptions. So ESPN did a simulation of the upcoming season, and they predicted that Jones will take Eli's job in week five. Max, yeah. how should they handle their quarterback situation? Shouldn't be week five. Like, I'll leave the arguments why it should be to you. There are compelling arguments to be made, but I think they are ultimately beaten by this big point. The Giants offensive line has been among the worst in the NFL over the last several years. Now, they've made improvements to the line, Zeitler in particular. Like, Will Hernandez in his second season, I thought he was a beast in college. I think he's going to be very good. And, and, and the assigned Patriots left tackle has not been so good. Nate Solder, but okay, at least he's better than what they had because Eric Flowers is one of the biggest draft busts of all time. Zeitler is a really, really good pass blocking guard. And that was part of the Odell trade. That was like maybe the best part for them, actually. And but but even so, offensive lines, and you can talk about this, it's not like you just have talent and then it all works. They need time to come together. And I remember when they drafted Eli, number one, well, they drafted Phillip Rivers and traded for Eli. So they traded Nate Kading and I think the pick that wound up to be Sean Merriman, if memory serves from that trade. For the number one pick in Eli Manning, they had Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner, MVP of the league, all-time great Kurt Warner, who, by the way, went on to show you in Arizona he still had plenty of football left. And they used Kurt Warner as a tackling dummy behind their offensive line so that Eli wouldn't have to take those licks as he was learning. And that's how the Giants should proceed here. Yes, Daniel Jones looks spectacular against the twos in the preseason, but he looked excellent, excellent. So far, I've been wrong about it so far. Like, we'll see what happens, but I'm very encouraged as a Giants fan. But until that line comes together, Eli Manning should be the quarterback. The old man's getting paid. He's had the job for too long anyway. The best value he can bring, other than as Daniel Jones is holding the clipboard, see how to go about your business as a pro. Eli's clutch. Eli, the locker room likes him, at least the personality, all that kind of stuff. He can give him that, but he can also take the hits as the O-line is coming together so Daniel Jones doesn't have to. Look what just happened to Andrew Luck, right? Let Eli take those shots. Well, listen, I think uh, the, the five games, is that's, that's a little bit amb that's ambitious to me when I look at the New York Giants. Number one, you wouldn't start Daniel Jones right off the top because Eli's making like $23 million. You're not going to just sit there and have, you know, your, a backup quarterback for $23 million against your cap. That, just, that doesn't make any sense. I think the game plan is going to be, it's really going to be this simple. It's going to be as long as the Giants are playing meaningful games, meaning that they're still in the hunt or not mathematically eliminated, then you're going to see Eli Manning still playing football. The question is about the New York Giants, their defense, I, you know, you talked about the offensive line, and it's going to take time for this offensive line to gel. There's no question about it. Everyone knows about Saquon Barkley. Who, they're going to run Saquon, Saquon Barkley into the ground, basically, because he's really their one legitimate threat. But when you look on the other side of the ball, that's where the real issues is, are for the New York Giants, their defense. Who's going to rush the passer? Who's going to get after it? That was last part time, of the deal last, with Odell. Uh, last, they lost the pass rusher. Uh, uh, listen, last time I checked, you got to play defense in the National Football League. And when you look at the Giants, they won't be able to stop anyone. And that's going to, and it's going to leave the Giants in a situation where they're going to be in shootouts for a lot of games. And that's going to leave Eli Manning exposed. And I think at some point during the season, probably around Thanksgiving in November, that's when we could possibly see the switch to Daniel Jones. Because once the Giants, the season is going awry and the Giants are, are basically eliminated, What's your you have to – I'm going to say, about, I'll say about week ten. That's I, I I'll say about week. Okay, 10. we're on the same That's page there. I think, I think like the the realistic over under should be week six, given how poorly Eli's played in recent years, particularly without Odell Beckham Jr. on the field. He has not been a starting caliber quarterback. With Odell, he's been barely a starting caliber quarterback. Now there's no Odell, right? I, I would say week six would be fair, but given the Giants' conservative nature, 
I would, I would push it back to week 10. That would be my prediction. Because while the quarterback's on the rookie deal, as you mentioned earlier in the show, you'd like him to get some experience because the clock is ticking anyway. Right. So get him some games under his belt. I'll guess week 10. Max, what are the things you would be looking at in Eli for you to be making that de decision of, is he still a starting caliber quarterback? Hasn't been for this was going on three years where he literally has not been starting caliber. I understand with Odell on the field, he's looked at times like a bad starting quarterback, like a bottom tier starting quarterback. But that's only with a uniquely gifted wideout on the field. When you take Odell off the field, he's been completely lost. Even Saquon Barkley, when he's not essentially getting sacked, because if you're tackled behind the line of scrimmage, it's a sack, brother. But even when that's not happening, he can't throw the ball to Saquon five yards accurately on his steps. Saquon's got to come back for the ball, reach for the ball. The defense is on him. And then it's only because it's Saquon Barkley he can sometimes make a play. No, e Eli has been terrible for three. By the way, Eli Manning, if I'm ever in a bar, I see Eli Manning, he's not paying for a drink. He won my Giants two Super Bowls with some of the most clutch plays ever. I love him to death. But his death as an NFL quarterback happened like three years ago and someone forgot to tell him. Yeah, I mean, listen, what was one of the complaints that Odell Beckham Jr. had about Eli? Can't give him the ball. You know, in the National Football League, you can't dinky dunking your way to winning to winning a lot of football games. you got to be able to push the ball down the field. And when you had a unique talent like Odell Beckham Jr., you're not utilizing him. So, really, that's why the Giants got rid of him, because the quarterback couldn't utilize the skill set of their star wide receiver. So, I, I, and, and what you saw in the preseason from Daniel Jones, he was getting pressured. The ball was getting pushed down Ooh. the field. And you're sitting back and, and everyone's sitting back and saying, whoa. Now that is a quarterback. Th that's yeah. a quarterback. Yeah. That's a guy, if he was paired with Odell Beckham Jr., now you can utilize those skills, you know, those skill sets right there. But unfortunately, Odell Beckham's not there. Saquon Barkley's going to get a lot, going to get a, a, a lot of plays. And, I, and I'm fearful that because the defense is bad, Eli Manning's going to get exposed because they're going to have to play catch up all the time. And, and Daniel Jones did have a great preseason, and I hate to bring this up, but you know you were really hard on sure his draft was. ticket six. A lot of people were. A lot yeah. of a lot, many people were. I mean, will Giants fans, will the public, will the media, will you? Do you think you will regret being so hard on that decision? No, I don't regret it because unless like he has, you have to be a Hall of Famer to justify the sixth pick in the draft when no one else is going to take you in the first round. Daniel Jones was a day two guy. Everyone knew it. And, and Gettleman got bluffed into taking him with the number six. Like, you could have had a better draft. However, the, the, the saying in football in front offices is, doesn't matter. If you think you located your quarterback, take him as soon as you can. But that doesn't mean Daniel Jones is just an, a starting caliber quarterback. That doesn't justify the pick. Or even a solid, good quarterback. That doesn't justify the pick. If you're going to get picked sixth overall when you were going to go day two, you better be a great quarterback. That said... He set up for success in the sense that what Damian said just right, like struck a chord with me. When you've been looking at a guy who's no longer an NFL starting quarterback for so long, you forget what a real quarterback looks like. And Daniel Jones against the twos in the preseason, as a Giants fan, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Eli Manning once upon a time was, was a good quarterback normally and a great one when you needed him to be. And I can't even blame him. He's an Iron Man. He doesn't miss snaps, let alone games. And he was getting murdered behind an offensive line that was just letting him take a beating for over half a decade now. So I get why you might get that beaten out of you. But like Andrew Luck retired, the only difference is Eli